for to this computer. Hey, welcome everybody to a weekend edition of Conduct Detrimental. Uh, this is Daniel Wallach, uh, the co one of the co-hosts. Uh, my fellow co-host, Dan Lust, is off for the weekend, so we're just going to have a one-host show with a return guest who's been all over the news this week, um, AJ Perez, you know, the uh, breaking news and and sort of, you know, writer, columnist for front office sports. I mean, his, 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 uh, his outlet just did a piece on some of the top insiders uh, in the world of sports, Jay Glazer, Adam Schefter, Ian Rappaport. If there ever was a sports law insider or a sports industry, breaking news Ooh. insider it's aj perez so I, i'm going to help you renegotiate your contract aj welcome to Con <laughs> welcome back to conduct detrimental for the fifth sixth or seventh time I've been yeah thanks for having me on yeah that, that was mike mccarthy's story it's a great read and I, yeah um uh yeah i it, it feels like that i mean my wife when we're out when i have like a pacer alert go off and i look at my i look at my apple watch i'm like i just sigh i'm like god what is it and i thought oh it's just uh patrick reed's lawyer doing something I'm like, all right, I don't worry about that. But yes, it's like this, it's, it has been a very busy time for me and uh, a, a lot of it because of the commanders. All right. Well, they work, you know, I've allegedly or reportedly 18 hours a day. What is your work? Before we dive into Dan Snyder, how many hours a day do you typically work? Or is it just basically you're on alert for whenever stuff happens? It's tough. It's been, um, really the last few days have not been a really heavy for me. And when it, when it comes to the commanders, when it came Wednesday, we had a ton of filings on the other cases I cover live, um, uh, live, live golf at PGA and, um, and also Michael Urban's case. And there was one other legal case that day I covered. Oh yeah. Flores. Um, so that, that was a busy day, but really for the commander sale, there was not, not much going on. My story lot yesterday was more just an update of um, okay. where, why, why things are kind of stalled. Um, but yeah, so it can vary. It can, it, it can, I can have an eight hour, normal eight hour day. I can have a full 14 hour day, but it's kind of, it's all sporadic in my beat. Well, we'll see if we can keep you under 18 hours on this episode. Uh, let, let's go to the story of the story of the week, story of the year, story of the sort of the decade in the national football league. We're beginning to reach critical mass. I've read that, 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 that phrase has appeared in a whole bunch of articles, uh, about the, you know, impending sale of the Washington commanders or the potential that the league and, and their owners are going to try to boot them out. And we're coming up on a date, March 26th, which is, which is the next owners meeting in Phoenix, Arizona. Where do things stand today? I know you've reported it all week, but it's a, it's a minute by minute changing story. Is there any movement on the Dan Snyder front on the sale process? Yeah, that's what hard to, hard to determine. It was basically Monday, I reported in the morning that was uh, that uh, owners had become frustrated with the pace of the sale. Then that then and then and then we see this later that day, Washington Post comes out with Dan Snyder wants identification. Dan Snyder doesn't want the Mary Jo White report to come out. Obviously, the the Washington commanders denied that report. Then ESPN comes out with Don's Don story about what was that because we broke the story about the subpoena um, about ten days ago. But then uh, ESPN comes out and just details details what was really part of the investigation which was over this loan and whether it was properly approved and whether roger goodell kind of didn't let the arbitration process pursue that um part of it whether where that loan was taken out properly or not and um so we really know because yeah. we were going for, for how many since it, it was reported the day that he sold that the doj was onto something and we were all using the financial irregularities that is not a crime so as a reporter Trying to figure out what was this, what what are they doing? What is that grand jury doing? It's been has taken that long. And credit to ESPN to and 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 and, and to Don to get into the getting to the bottom of it. Yeah, Don was the guest on our yeah. I listened. Episode. So we're going bookending yeah. here. You have Don uh, on to AJ. We're going to just basically be the Dan Snyder podcast until uh, the end of the owners meeting. But you know the Bank Bank of America came into this process on on November second. We're now entering uh, the fifth month. Month, of, yeah. a, of a sort of a an auction or a sale process yeah. and already it may be one of the longest selling processes on record why is it taking yeah. so long to dispose of or sell a team when it's really the only one available in the nfl so yeah. many people want to own an nfl team or professional sports team it's a billionaire's toy there are there are more than enough billionaires to go around why is well, this taking so long that's the problem like right 
they're running out of billionaires. That, that, that was a quote I had within a couple of days of the, of the sale announcement or whatever, exploring a sale announcement. They really, one of the, one of the bankers told me a couple of weeks ago, you really need $60 billion, uh, yet a wealth of around $60 billion to be an NFL owner. If you want to own the entire team, that includes putting down, if you spend $6 billion on the commanders, you need to put $1.8 billion and it has to be cash, be liquid. Um, well, like that part can't be financed. Why, That's why is, what's that, taken. is that a league requirement? It's the only league that has it. It's in the it's it's in the NFL bylaws, um, constitution and bylaws. You have to have thirty percent, and that has just shut a lot of people out. Um, you know, it's the only only league that has that requirement. Um, so at so like I said, so at at six billion, that's one point eight billion. Um, and so obviously, if the that's a you know scale, but even when Rob Walton bought the uh, bought the Broncos, he he won the bid in June um, last year, and. You know, I had sources saying that, telling me that even he had to take out a little bit of a loan, not to obviously not for that 30%, but just to get the transaction kind of moving. Because when you talk about that much money in cash, Dan, it's like, it's it's ins- just hard to just even put, that's more than all of us are going to make by times tens in our lives. Um, and that's only to buy 30% of the team. And that, so that is, that you have to move that around. And, that, and, and that's difficult. That's one thing. The, the, the numbers that I've had, that I've had my, one, of, one of my sources saw the numbers that were able, that were kind of shared with the potential owners. And the, it's not a great financial picture for it. And that, I don't know if that's why the commanders, commanders uh, sent that statement out after my story last night. But that, so there's, so the financial part of it, the stadium's going to, the stadium is going to cost about three to $4 billion. So yeah, you, don't, you don't add that to the price of the team, but you're going to need that within the next several seasons. And, and then when you look at the revenue streams and the revenue streams from ticketing to merchandise to visiting, visiting ticket sales, they're near the bottom of the league, which is unheard of. In this size of a market, this is a top eight market, DMA. You, you, live, in, you live in Virginia? You're, you're like yes. in the market? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, we're in the D.C. market. So, you know, and the, how far the team has fallen since 1999 when Dan Snyder bought it. Um, I'm not saying dollars wise, but just revenue, just I mean, they may be, you know, there's the, the revenue has just fallen each year. There's 20,000 less seats at that stadium now than when he bought it or within, within a year of him buying it. So it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that, ha- that have to be fixed. And we saw the NFLPA survey that came out Wednesday, ranking the commanders dead last in um, overall and including in, on, in, in facilities and including in really low in treatment to families. It's, it's yeah, really that's, low in that's travel some category. That's some category treatment of families. What, what, like allowing that's right. That's you know, really huge. I mean, that's to, you know, there's like you know, how that's you know, low hanging, how they AJ, that's low hanging tickets, tickets you know, just giving the ticket, the tickets on the right part of the stadium to family members of players, stuff like that, little things. That's you know, that, yes, that costs you revenue. Those tickets are worth something. But if you go to these games now, even their homecoming last year against their Green Bay Packers, most of the fans were Green Bay Packers fans. You go when they play an NFL East opponent, or sorry, NFC East opponent, they're pretty much going to be Eagles fans, Cowboys fans. Not many. You know, the Commanders fans are about 50 50 at best some, at some of those games. It's it's not a good situation. This is a very, very major fixer upper. And I think one thing when we lost sight of it, when we we're talking about, oh, it's going to go for I'm not, not my reporting. I, I, I did report they could go for as much as seven billion. I have reported that. But some people are going eight billion. When you think and look, eight billion dollars, you're going to go for nearly twice what the Broncos sold when they when the Broncos have a well a better a better situation for their stadium. Um, there's this has some renovations, you know. There it's that's an older, but it's almost the same age as as mm-hmm. FedEx, but it's but it's in better shape. Um, and you don't have all the other issues. The Broncos, you know, the Broncos family obviously with the Bowen and is unfortunate, uh, uh, you know, health issues before he passed. You know that. That's not, but that's not what the what the commanders have. The commanders have scandal after scandal after scandal, and you know pushing back and you know just not being. Dan Snyder never ingratiated himself here to to the to the fan base, um, and I think along with losing, this is what led us here. Yeah, well, how did the financial? You know, if you if you indicate that the financials are at the bottom of the barrel, right? They're they're last in every category except oddly they're number one in strength and conditioning. Uh, go figure, but they're last and everything else. Yeah, I, mean, I, I am. A, I'm. I'm a trainer. We all love trainers. Only, only two teams. I think the Ravens were dead, gave gave the F, and then there was like a D, and everything else is a B and above. 
because people love us trainers. So well, how do you justify a sale price, even approximating what the Broncos went for? If you're last in every other category, you have you have a dilapidated stadium, no new stadium or, or, or you know, public stadium funding on the horizon. How do you get to, you know, six billion, seven billion you know, dollars as an ask? Do you think or I'm not asking you for your opinion. But do you get the sense, and I'll take your opinion as well, but do you get the sense that he's setting the, he's setting the bar so high that he knows he's not going to get the number and ultimately really doesn't want to sell the team, and he's going to turn around and say, look, I didn't get any reasonable offers. I'm not going to sell the team at a discount. Is there a sense that that is fueling uh, his reticence over selling? Yeah, that I mean, I... I reported that as a possibility the day that he sold because it, um, Robert Sarver was, this is a situation that saw, we, some, not me, but some bankers thought Sarver was going to do when Sarver announced he got suspended, he announced he's going to sell, you know, there was, there was a, there, there, there were some bankers who thought by the end of that year process, when the suspension was over, he would keep the team. Obviously that that's, he sold, but that wasn't the case. So now, you know, would is Snyder in the same boat? I mean, the going, but then, so I, I think, I think it was always headed towards a sale, but I think the sale process has taken so long that this is why we're talking about removal again. Um, because like, you know, I think there, there, there's a sense of frustration that Snyder one is obviously not um, welcome to, I'm not saying that he's barred, but not welcome to a bid by Jeff Bezos. Um, and I think the other part of it is it's like, you're right. The, what we were sold in November and the stories that came out, including including Forbes story in December, where the first round bids were above $7 billion. I was in California at Christmas and I was like, there's no way. I mean, there's no way. Because is there anybody who looks at what shape this franchise is in? You know, you're you're basically buying what it, what it was in the 80s and early 90s. That's what you're buying. You're buying, you're, you're buying a great historic NFL franchise that has had a rough 24 years. And I mean, it's longer than that. It, this, this, some of the stuff predates even Dan Snyder buying the team in 1999. So you're, you're, you're buying. I want to say a fixer upper, but basically, what NFL version of a fixer upper is? It's like a, you know, you got a, you got a, a house that's been dilapidated, but it's on a like radio drive or something. It's something really, you know, it's on a very nice stretch of, you yeah. know, land. So yeah. that's, so that's, so that's what you're getting, and that's what pe people love this franchise so much. At least the ones that haven't abandoned it. That that they're you know that you know they're they're going to be counting on those people returning. Yeah, but I think I think to play devil's advocate to support the value, the increased value of the franchise. I mean, as dilapidated as it is, as poorly performing as it is, and even with the stench of Dan Snyder, you know, hanging over the franchise, the moment a new owner is, is approved by the NFL, uh, you know, ownership group, uh, Virginia is going to welcome the Washington Commanders with open arms. They're going to get a yeah. sweetheart land deal with like public funding. And, you know, there's going to have to be some contribution by the new owner, but they're going to get a palace. They're going to get Jerry World in Virginia with all the associated commercial well, sale. And they're going to get online sports betting. You know, these, these different jurisdictions, yeah. Maryland, Virginia, D.C. Uh, we all have it now. To give yeah. sports betting licenses to the teams. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And there is like there is one of the sports books has a has a location at FedEx, but um, FanDuel or DraftKings, one of the two. Uh, oh, geez, I could I could this fanatics. One of those two. Yeah, it could be fanatics, and I don't know about fanatics. I, somebody it could be. Yeah, maybe that is it. There's like I know one of the there, there's a location there. You're right, yeah. Dan. So yeah, you're it's it, but what type of owner? That's the whole thing. We know it's going to be some rich guy who's going to buy the team. We know well, that you know, most likely. Like, but, you know, but but but. But it's like, do you do you do you need a Mark Cuban type of person to like save this? I mean, they're narrow just because you have a new owner. If it's a hedge fund guy that is just as reclusive as Dan Snyder has been, I don't know. You know, there'll be a honeymoon period for sure. Anybody but Dan Snyder. That's everybody. Oh that's, God, this, that all the time. This new owner, whoever it is, it it, it it could be you know sort of David Berkowitz or Charles Manson. He'll be treated like like Steve <laughs> Cohen is treated of the New York Times. There'll be a honeymoon. A honeymoon period yeah. that lasts longer than most marriages, okay? It will be like night and day. I think the problem here, AJ, is you hit upon a really important barrier in that whoever comes up as the high bidder is going to have to front 30% cash to pay for their bid. Yeah. And if, at a $6.3 billion valuation, which you reported is the high bid so far, we're looking mm -hmm. at $2 billion down. 
And some of the bidders that 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 have been publicly speculated about Tillman Fertitta, he's worth eight billion. Josh Harris is worth conveniently six point three billion. Are those individuals going to put up, you know, one third or one quarter of their total net worth as a down payment? That would be yeah, those that one person, only one person in the universe that would be able to just write this check and not bat an eye or not feel the pain in his pocketbook, which would be Jeff Bezos, who's worth a hundred and seventeen yeah. billion dollars. That's a that's a that's an easy, an easy substitution. Bezos for Snyder. What are you hearing about yeah. Bezos's viability as a bidder and Snyder's um receptiveness to a Bezos bid. Yeah. Um, also, just one thing. Those valuations are estimates. We don't know. I mean, they people, especially when it comes to hedge funds managers, like um, obviously Harris's background and uh, and 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 the others, um, you know, they're, they, you don't really know how much they're worth. It's, you know, Forbes does their best and other Bloomberg do, do their best jobs trying to, you know, encapsulate what they their their value you, you never really know though i mean that's just those are kind of and i'm not saying they're guesses they're more than guesses but yeah so yeah but yeah bezos is there's people there's there there's things going on behind the scenes and i've been trying to hold a jerry jones for a week on this on on this but i've i've been hearing for about a week now that there's behind the scenes that these these some owners and possibly league executives have been kind of trying to um you know work smooth things over between snyder and bezos not you know over snyder's uh, up being upset over Bezos for the, owning the Washington Post. And I think there's, you know, there that's the easiest path. You're right. The easiest path towards a new owner would be Dan Snyder just kind of saying, all right, let's let's sit down with Bezos. That's, you know, he's probably he easily can bid more. Do you, you see that rationally happening? I mean, Bezos is uh, news a lot of people are trying to make post. it work, but yeah, I, a lot I, of people I, trying to make it work, but it's, I don't know. I, you know, I don't, I, there's, the fact that we've seen so many reports, including mine yesterday, that, you know, just about if, if removal is in play. And the mean with removal and is in play, that'll take it out of Snyder's hands. And I don't, you know, I think that's still, we're not going to know until the end of the month to, for the league meetings where that even is. And that could take longer than that. I don't, they don't want to do it. They don't want to set a precedent even for Dan Snyder. They do not want to remove anybody. And I don't even know right now if 24 votes are there. I think they were getting close back in November before the sale. We saw what, what Jim Mersey said a few weeks before that in October at the at the at the at the uh, fall owners meeting. So, um, you know that that there was merit for removal, but there needs to be twenty four. And a lot of the owners still, you know, they they want to give Snyder a, a little more time and a little and just you know have him choose because there's litigation. Obviously, he's su he's subject to arbitration like everybody else. Dan Snyder can sue for anybody, but when you're subject to arbitration, it's probably not going to be. It's a process that Goodell oversees, as you know very well. Yeah, but the way I look at it, you know, the concern over the precedent being set, I, I think that's overstated because the precedent exists by virtue of the, um, you know, ability to remove an owner being in the Constitution already. It's exactly. there. The precedent mm -hmm. is there. The precedent is the language in the Constitution that gives the commissioner that right. And it's been exercised throughout uh, other sports, Major League Baseball, yeah. you know, Marge Schott, uh, and the NBA. Yeah, for various reasons, too. I mean, usually in other sports, it is because of financial reasons. And I, Art Modell was, had, was, was, you know, was he wasn't going to be removed, you know, but he had to sell because of financial reasons. That mm -hmm. was as close as it's got in modern NFL history. You know, it was, it, that wasn't, it probably wouldn't have been a removal process, but it was, he was, the, the financial constraints, I don't have any indication the commanders are in any way, shape, or form like the, the the former Browns were, but uh, it's it's not looking good. But yeah, you're right. There's been uh, every every other sport. You, you you there's various reasons. You know, the Dodgers got removed for Frank McCourt for being for having financial issues. The Marshot you mentioned. You also you you also have in the NBA. You you have Sterling. Um, so yeah. every other sport has pretty much had it except for the NFL. Well, well, and the NFL has you know so many uh, avenues or options to choose from with you know guilt or you know misconduct. I mean, you have you have all the alleged improprieties at issue uh in in the federal you know investigation of virginia you have the sexual harassment allegations you have reams and reams of of you know documentary evidence testimony people willing to come in to talk harassment of 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 witnesses interruption and obstruction of investigations this person's you know sort of you know record 
is unparalleled in the history of professional sports. George Steinbrenner. George Steinbrenner was sidelined for like, what was it, a couple of years or two years? Yeah. Uh, because he, 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 I think he tried to, you know, uh, he paid somebody to dig up dirt on Dave Winfield. That was the bar. Yeah, I mean, that was yeah. the bar in Major League Baseball 30 years ago. And I don't think any of the other owners are looking over their shoulder, worrying about that precedent being set in 1991, impacting them, you know, you know, over time. Those are those are one offs. Those are such extreme, um, you know, just outrageous types of of of, you know, misfeasance, malfeasance that an owner's not going to get removed over an accident, over inadvertence, yeah. over negligence. You've got to you've got to commit really horrific or bad conduct and you know uh, you know i I guess what we're seeing over the course of several sports is that it's happening with far more regularity than it used to happen i mean the 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 the, the, you know sort of the conventional argument was that look at all the players who have been arrested for you know you know crimes over the course of their you know lives and and people point to the uh, uh i guess the percentage of players who've been under criminal investigation i think in the ownership ranks the the misconduct might even be at a higher percentage when you look at all of the civil <laughs> lawsuits and some of the you know um, some of the recent you know, yeah yeah and Snyder Jim Dolan this is not a, you know this is not a choir here this these are some pretty pretty serious uh, allegations but let's let's talk about March 26 because all all of what we're talking about so far on this podcast is a prelude to the moment of truth which will be three weeks from now, three weeks and one day from now in Phoenix, Arizona. I presume you've got your flight booked and you're going to be out there trying to get information, yes. find out what's happening. Uh, I guess you should try to stay in the same hotel. Uh, I, I Yeah, guess, right. <laughs> $2,000 a night. I don't okay. know. <laughs> um, interesting. Is it in Scottsdale or Phoenix? Um, it's just a Biltmore. So that's the Phoenix area. I got, um, so that's. Okay. Um, one, so. one of your tweets got my attention and maybe the language you used was inadvertent but you suggested in a tweet on uh, on friday that one of the factors uh that may be bearing on the lack of movement in the sale of the commanders is the possibility that prospective bidders feel that the nfl could take over the franchise via removal of dan snyder are you referring to an extraordinary type of situation where the league just takes over the franchise or are we talking about the more conventional route? Of the conventional route. Having a mini trial and yeah. voting, having 24 out of 32. 24 votes. Yeah, sorry. That's what I meant. It was not, it's, it's, it was the 24 votes for removal, which I had in the story. Yeah, kind of a tweet, kind of like it's lost there. But yeah, so it, it would be the, it's what we're talking about now. The, the 24 votes, the same threshold you need to approve an owner, the threshold you need to remove one. Um, and that, who's, and who's, also, gonna, who's, who's gonna do the job? Who is going to be, gonna be who's going to be the owner that steps up to the place? Is it going to be first of all the commissioner can do it himself to to get the process rolling. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the the Goodell can nominate. Usually, it's going to be coming. It's going to. I was told, you know, while you know, there's Goodell, there's going to be. I would. It could happen that way, and it very it spells it out in the Constitution that he can do it that way. I think it's going to be more 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 likely a consortium of owners along with Goodell. I mean, I think Goodell, you know, he is, Goodell is, you know, the owners are his boss still. And even Dan Snyder is still his boss. And that's how, that's how you have to look at it. So it's going to be a groundswell. And I've reported this several times. There'll be a groundswell of owners and it's going to be it. And they are not going to put them up for a vote until they have the votes. It's kind of like, in, it's kind of like how they do in Congress. You know, they're not going to throw a bill up there for a, a, a floor vote until they're assured there's 24. They're not going to do it just to, just to embarrass Dan Snyder they're not going to be put that up there until so yeah the, you're right three weeks from now is the is the owners meetings there's no indication that we'll have the Mary Jo White report by then that is going to be that is very very interesting to me because you've covered this we, we go back with Zeke a long time about you know personal conduct policy I mean and I think that's we, when Mary Jo White began her investigation into Dan Snyder back when you and I were uh report <laughs> records in the city yeah, seven years, Florida, six years ago. Yeah. So it just seems like it's gone on that long. Yeah. So I don't. So, so this is what Dan. What this is like. You, you're, you're, you follow this stuff. You're, you have this down. You know how the NFL works when it comes to investigations of, of, of under the under the personal conduct policy. You know they 
allow the police to investigate and then conclude their investigation typically. Now we know that what the DOJ is doing, you, we know what the U.S. Attorney's Office is doing, the grand jury, the FBI, the IRS, that are a part. I just don't know if this impacts Mary Jo White's report, because if there is, and you can tell me I'm wrong, this is more just my reading into it, I don't have, you know, but if they put something out that the FBI and IRS don't have, that'll be problematic, possibly. If Mary Jo White finds something that 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 the, that the feds could go after, that's problematic. Um does also do does she does she have to hold back certain things to not jeopardize a criminal investigation? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, you know, there's there's gonna have to be some discussion because they mm-hmm. you don't so you know, this is all this is going back to December. December we got the Congress the, the House Oversight Committee report. Not a lot of new information in there, nothing new on the financial stuff, which stuck out of me. When when I was reading that, I'm like, wow, they just sent that letter to the FTC last April and that was it. And it was like they Basically, sent the letter to the FTC. We got the we got the the attorneys general in DC, Virginia, and Maryland going off, and uh, Maryland's Maryland settled. DC sued two lawsuits. Virginia is still going, but this kind of all sparked this whatever's happening with the DOJ right now. Um, mm-hmm. So, and we don't even know the full extent of it. It goes all right. For my information, it goes beyond what ESPN reported Tuesday. There's other things they're looking at. Um, such, and, a, such as uh, um, let me stop you right there. I what else? I can't. I know I can't. I'm still working on it, but there, I, I can say at least right now that that there that there are other items they're looking at besides that that how that loan was taken out. What else? It's is more left? than that. What else is left? Well, it's <laughs> and, and, and well, <laughs> well, and, and it's not just the yeah. Well, they they did send the team you know a request for information. Um, uh, you know that over what what the story we broke last March and early April before the FTC the FTC letter. We it, it was it was it was all about the revenue holding back ticket 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 revenue maybe you know the whole two books thing that we broke, you know there is that as well. But there's something else. There's the other things they're looking at. I can't uh, violate confidence, but there's there's other things at which I'm working on. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to this very very soon to get to. Um, once I you know once it's been vetted past my editors and once I'm very 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 comfortable with it, because there's one thing to report on a sale, and I've been very accurate with my reporting on that. When you're reporting on criminality, potential criminality, it is very, very difficult. You can't make accusations that like that you don't have, you know, well, pretty much, you know, physical proof of or at least viewing something. You know, I can't going off, you know, you, you can go off sources for a lot of things going off, you know, alleging financial and in, financial impropriety, any kind of criminal. This is not speaking about Snyder. It's just speaking about my entire career covering this. You cannot lay it. That 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 bar is very high. Um, and for I, me I to might, report stuff AJ, like that, I might have to start deleting some of my tweets. Um, I, I used, well, you can say alleged or possibility. I don't know if it's a matter of defamation so much as it is, as it is journalistic, journalistic ethics, right? Mm-hmm. Because you use the weasel words or, or at least the couch it as sort of not uh, factual, but yeah. it's being, you know, a, a possible that it's being investigated, which. Yeah may get the story out there but you know from a journalistic uh from a journalism ethics point of view i guess you want to sort of nail everything down shut before you report. yeah yeah it, that's when you when you when you when you anytime you allege everything and even even my report last march and april about the two books and uh, more about the holding revenue back none of that pointed back i mean the outsider was not listed in the few the, the top paragraphs because nothing ever points a lot of my reporting and reporting by others um, I, except for Don's story, Tuesday pointed back to Dan Snyder directly. That it's so rare to have anything that that Congress or anybody else is investigating that points directly back to Snyder. Obviously, Tiffany Johnston pointed right back to Snyder. Mary Jo White's investigating that. That's how it started 13 months ago. Uh, about 11 months ago, she added on the financial part of it. So now the financial part is also wrapped up in this DOJ investigation. So that's that's another whole thing. It's like I don't. That's gonna. I'm. That's gonna possibly have an impact. This is just my analysis. This will yeah. possibly have an impact of what Mary Jo White's gonna report. I'm not to say it's gonna. It's gonna affect her timeline, but it could affect because it's like a, just going by my history of covering this stuff for 15 years, going back to New Orleans Saints, uh, Star Caps, the whole supplement thing, where that actually that was a big big win. And eventually, that 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 Star Caps case where several players tested positive for a bad substance. Um, you know that was you know a, a, I think it was I think it was. Judge Ma- Judge uh, David Doty, Manzant. Yeah, or Su- Susan- it was Doty or Manzant. Doty. It was it was it was a Doty or Manzant. Who and Manzant has this Michael Irvin case. Uh so 
Um, oh, no, Star Caps was Minnesota. Uh, so, you know, the, the NFL players. Oh, yeah, it was Doty. Yeah, it was yeah. Doty. Yeah. It's NFL been a long PA does really well. That was my very Doty, Mazant, and Richard Berman. Yeah. If they could get one of those three yeah. judges, they're going to win every case. <laughs> I think I think it's hilarious that Michael Irvin's case is, is in front of is in front of uh, Judge. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just funny how they're all cherry picking. Well, uh, you know, but yeah, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. It, 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 it was the Doty, but... District of Texas isn't even where like Dallas is. Oh, right, it's not even but where. But Dallas it's a federal. Is, but every but case is the tape the District Tuesday. of Texas. Yeah, so I mean, good good for Irvin um, to get that tape because I think that's a very low. You know, it's asking to see the tape where you basically you got suspended, potentially put your job in jeopardy over an incident. It, being able to view the tape is just not that big of an ask. Okay, no, but there's something there's something else there. I want we'll, I want to get to that in a little while, but I want to I want to ask you about the prospect of Dan Snyder selling something less than his entire interest in the team because you reported that you know Snyder keeps two or kept two sets of books. You have these allegations made by the former limited partners that were featured in uh, Don Van Atta Jr.'s story. So it leads me to, you know, ask, well, why would anybody ever want to be a limited partner yes. of Bill Snyder if Bank of America is issuing a prospectus for the sale? You issue prospectuses when you want to sell limited interest, not the entire interest. And the statement that the Washington Commanders sent to you last night, calling your story blatantly false. By the way, you should wear that as a badge of honor because your, oh, your batting yeah. average... Your batting average is like, you know, George Brett, Rod Carew, like, you know, times two. Uh, your, your batting average in, in the realm of accuracy is much better than the Washington Commanders, uh, you know, sort of batting average in terms of veracity. So I, I take that one with a badge of honor, but there was something that caught my eye in the press release, or not the press release, but the statement yes. uh, that issued to front office sports or about front office sports. It says front office sports tonight posted a blatantly false report, not true, regarding the ongoing process involving a potential commander's transaction. Yes, and you highlighted that. That is I very mean, interesting. It's a sale. Sale is the potential sale. Why did they use transaction? I yeah. think it might be because they're keeping their options open. They may want to sell. They're trying to. I mean, that would be cash. I think that I mean him keeping even 10% of the team right now, um, you know, and there's, there's been, I think there's been at least one report this week that they want him around just in case these, whatever, whatever these legal cases or this, this federal investigation goes. I don't know. I think, but I think we're, you know, there's, there's two things. All right. I'll, so there's, that has to be approved too. You know, obviously any, any, any change of ownership, even, you know, even the 40%, you know, that Dan Snyder bought two years ago, you know, the 40% buying out the three co-owners, um, that, 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 that required two approvals first, the, you know, the debt waiver, and then him taking on that, that, that part of the team. Um, and so this, any, any, any kind of ownership change is going to require 24 votes. Now that's also the, on the, on the second part of it, Dan Snyder taking less money for all the team to, into, to spite Jeff Bezos, which is one theory out there. That has to be approved. And I think if there's a chance that both of those scenarios, the NFL owners could not get to 24 votes. So then you're back to square one. Then you're back with Dan Snyder keeping the team and then whatever, keep selling again, putting it back on the market, figuring something else out. It's a great it, point but there. You raise a great point because if if um, Snyder receives a, below, a, a perceived below market value, that could have the effect. Mm -hmm. Especially uh, if there's uh, a known the bid higher. Future sales. Yes. Yeah, especially if there's a known bid that is maybe even I would say within a couple hundred million dollars, just just to, to just to spite Jeff Bezos. I you know, this is my analysis, not sourced. My analysis on that would be um that the, the owners probably approved that. It was a couple hundred million dollars difference. If 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 and there's a big if that Bezos bid that Bezos or not officially bid or just has a number in mind, but he goes with Josh Harris or somebody else. You know, they're if it's if it's above a certain threshold, you know my analysis is there's a chance that the owners wouldn't approve it. Yeah, because I mean, you're right because these sale, these teams great. don't go on sale very often, and when they do, they want it to go up. And now it's gonna it's likely gonna sell for more than four point six five billion dollars that the that, that the Broncos sold for last year. Um, but it's even to get to that five billion dollar number in the and and Washington Post had five point five billion from Fertitta. My six point three billion number that I got very well sourced that the team had no issues with um about a, about six weeks ago 
that bid has kind of gone away as far as I can tell. I cannot figure out, I, I, I can never report who bid it, bid that number, um, but that was the highest bid that we know through the first several weeks of this, of our first couple months of this, of uh, the sale process. That bid may have gone away. So bidders drop off when one, most likely, the most top reason is they can't get 30% um, liquid as part of the transaction. That's the highest that's the highest bar. And the NFL is going to need to change that going forward because this is this has caused a problem in this sale. It's going to cause a problem for all the future sales. Now they're going to, will, will they relax uh, hedge funds or, or private equity buying, buying, buying part of a team or being a majority owner? Possibly. But it's, they're going to need that, they're going to need to re examine that 30% number because it is very prohibitive. I mean, you have to be worth so many tens of billions of dollars. Could um, the owners, uh, AJ, could the owners just agree to waive it? In the case of this sale, that's an interesting question. I've been trying to figure that out, and that's that's it's that's their rule. It's their own on rule. They could, they could, yeah, they could you, yeah, yeah. their own rule with like a voice vote. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it would require yeah, it would require an amendment to the constitution. There's several amendments. Um, we got the most recent version of the constitution as part of the as part of the John Gruden's case in Discovery. Um, uh, so uh, you know, which show you know that it's uh, the most updated version. It, there are they've they've changed that they've they made the change when when Tish became a part owner of the, of the um, giants. So they they, they do make changes and, but, but I don't, I just don't know. We, we, we don't know if they'll, I don't, there's no indication that they're going to make any change for the sale yet. I don't think they're, I think for this one, they're going to just go with the current rules because, you know, but it's, it's getting so out of hand though. I think, uh, I think that's, uh, that's something they're going to re-examine. And, and we, we, we were asking Roger Goodell this over the lack of, um, people of color, lack of women owners, uh, because that 30% rule does uh, impact uh, not just, it, it impacts everybody, including the potential of having a second non-white owner in the NFL. Does it have to be a singular owner? Can it just be a consortium? You put together, no. you put together yeah. a, a group? That's a, the, the, here, here, Here's the problem. So that 30% number is twofold. 30%, you have to have 30% as a controlling owner, at least 30%. So that person, you know, can own or finance, but finance, you know, above 30. After, after you get to 30, you can finance the rest. Nobody else can own 30, more than 30%. So you can't have just, you're going to need more than four, three or four owners, and along with maybe maybe loans from a bank or whatever else, you, however else you want to finance it. But the, no, nobody else can own more than the controlling owner, which is, does, so if you have three rich guys worth the same, one of them has to step up, I mean, four, three or four rich guys worth, worth worth the same some of them has to step up and take that 30 percent, and it has to be linked right to him it has to be his money well they, they, can, they can't jointly contribute to the 30 percent. one person has to meet the 30 percent uh cash down payment threshold yeah yeah okay. it, that's it yeah it's it that that's basically that's one it way kind of eliminates you and me and and you know most, <laughs> most people in our audience i mean i don't know how many people walk around with two billion dollars in cash handy i mean the the yeah. the, the, the universe a potential yeah. business here probably you know so yeah it took it took 64 days between the uh between rob walton's group uh and rob walton being the controlling owner of the of the, the broncos it took 50 uh, 64 days between uh sorry it, it took oh, to, to go back 50 days between the announcement and 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 before the finance committee 50 days the the this the, the application goes into the nfl the packet slash app application goes to the nfl pretty much all pre it's it's you know pretty much they're gonna. It goes. It goes to the NFL Finance Committee. They give. They don't really give their approval, but they review it and then they pass along for for their recommendation for a full vote. That took fifty days, and then it took another fourteen days for the the NFL owners to convene at the Mall of America in Minnesota to vote. So that was a sixty four day process. So a lot of people. I was one of the few. Um, I did. You know. I was. I, I was one of the few where I said, there's no chance that <laughs> this is like a couple months ago, go, even going up to now the, the, everybody. And there was some reports here uh, that, you know, that, that there, yeah, that he have somebody in place and there's going to be a vote at the NFL owners meeting. There's zero chance at this point. Um, unless you know, I, there's no application in, as far as I can tell, I've been asking, um, you know, into the finance committee, there's no chance there's, we wouldn't know by now. So that's going to, we're, we're, we're looking at, if you go 64 days, it could happen today. We're looking two months down the line. Now, could that process be truncated for certain people like Bezos? Sure. I mean, I think that's the review process for, for Jeff Bezos is not going to take long if he bids. The review process for others could take a little longer because you're, it's, 
such a lot, you know, it's, it, it's a lot of money. And, 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 and during that process, you know, these, the controlling owner is going to be moving assets around depending on what those assets are. If they're stocks, it'll be easier to sell than if you, it's real estate, you know, there's, it just, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a long process. I mean, that, that 30% is a, is a major factor. Yeah. Um, AJ, how much access are the uh, bidders given to the books and records of the commanders? You're talking about two sets of books and Snyder, you know, sort of concealing some information from uh, other buyers and from his limited partners in the past. He didn't uh, get the sign off from the three yeah. limited partners for a $55 million line of credit. What are you hearing about how transparent uh, Snyder is is being? How how much access prospective bidders are getting to the books of the, of the commanders to see the true financial picture of the organization. Is he pulling some stuff back? Uh, are you hearing any, uh, in any sense that uh, there's frustration over not seeing the full financial picture of the Washington commanders, which would hamper the ability to bid the, the true value? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I, I really, that's a pro that's part of the process. I'm not sure about the fact that I reported yesterday that you know there are financials being sh shared that show the you know the financial like the revenue streams of the team being uh, kind of not on par where they should be for the size of a market. Um, but that's so that information got out there. Got and that information got to me. Now whether that information got that did not you know that that whether that information came from that did not come from any of the bidding parties. Um, I will say that, but the information got out there. Um, so and it's not. It's it's accurate and it's it's that's also no duh. You, wow, you're really saying that team with the one of the worst ticket, one of the worst uh, lighting attendance, the stadium being twenty thousand seats smaller than when he bought the team or around when he bought the team. You're telling me that the ticket sales are down. Oh, thanks, AJ. But I'm like, yeah, well, you know, that's but that's information that you know, including merchandise sales too, which was new to me. I got that information yesterday as well. You know, there's so there's. It, that and the stadium, along with thirty percent you need, it's 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 uh, bogged down things. I would say bogged down things a little, you know, in in ways that another team selling in the NFL wouldn't. You know, the last one, the last team to sell before the Broncos was the Carolina Panthers, and obviously Richardson, who just passed away a couple of days ago. You know, he was, he, um, you know, Tepper wasn't the highest bidder for that one. Interestingly. Yeah. You know, he came away with it, but he was, uh, you know, he was, he was the easiest choice because he had the finances. He had, he had the wealth he had, he had, he was able to reach that 30% threshold. It was a lot lower for, for his team than it's going to be for this one uh, as far as to total dollars. But that's, you know, that when you get to this process and you, and you, uh, and you, you know, they're going to go the easiest path forward. Easiest path forward right now is Jeff Bezos. If Dan Snyder is talked into selling to him. Okay. Uh, before we, you know, before we wrap up our conversation, I want a game plan here for March 26th. Okay. What does Dan Snyder need to do on or before March 26th to forestall, you know, the, you know, the invocation of, of, of the constitution of bylaws to, to get rid of them. What does he need to do? He's not going to be able to consummate a sale or to have an agreement. Maybe well, he has an agreement in principle. What yeah, that's what that's what's stop it. What needs to happen? Yeah, yeah uh, uh, basically an agreement in principle, and one uh, you know, and that he you know, can walk away from that he can walk away from afterwards. Uh, well, it's all. I mean, it has to be something that has to be real. I mean, you can't just pick somebody who has who who, who may have issues raising get, getting that thirty percent threshold, or or even financing the entire purchase price, whatever that is. It's probably going to be around six or a little below. So. That's uh, that's going to be you know that that that's a tough part to to gauge because if it's going to be someone like Harris who has already went through the bidding process and, and already went through the bidding process with the Broncos, you know the league already he's a known entity he's a known quantity so is Bezos so it's, and 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 some of the other candidates uh, Tillman's kind of an interesting one but uh, Fertitta but um, there, but these other candidates have been involved in NFL discussions over teams before that's a very that's a you know that's going to help them out. If, you know, if Dan Snyder goes and picks somebody else we never heard of who has, we, we don't, can hard to verify things, maybe that'll hold it up. It's, it's, just, it's just a major unknown because, you know, it, that would stop the process. That's the only thing I think is going to stop the process, you know, towards removal. Now, well, will, will these, will NFL, will, will Pash or Goodell or somebody else, the NFL front office kind of put the brakes on it if they're worried about, you know, uh, this investigation, you know, maybe that's, I don't, 
I've had no indication that's going to be the case, but you know, it's always a possibility. So many possibilities, but yeah, basically right now it's, they're going to need, this is what I'm, you know, even before these, uh, the ESPN, and the Washington Post stories this week, you know, the owners were frustrated by the pace, but by not knowing by now who was the leader. Um, and, you know, and it's it, that, and that was before they learned, you know, that and the team denied it, like the Don denied my story, the identification request, you know, the Mary Jo White report, ask, Snyder allegedly asking not to, to hold back the Mary Jo White report. You know, that was before that, and obviously before ESPN reported um, about the, the federal investigation. So there's going to, you know, there's a lot of smoke right now, you know, to, to, to put that fire out, at least for the interim, would be picking somebody that has a good chance of moving forward. I'm cynical, AJ. I, I don't think there's going to be any change in the status quo between now and March 26. We're only three weeks away. Uh, Snyder's had four months to sell the team. It sounds like he's digging his heels in. He's starting to ask for, uh, you know, indemnification and starting starting to sort of, you know, weasel out or wiggle out of some, you know, prior assurances that he gave the league seemingly. So I think we're going to get to March 26. Nothing is going to happen. And then at the meeting, they can't actually have the trial at the meeting. They can just sort of have a conversation about what to do next. Yes. And then that's going to yeah. be another process. It won't happen at, a, at, a, at, a, at an owner's meeting. It will have to happen at a special meeting. And then there's time, you know, there's an investigation that the league would have to do. A yes. Short investigation followed by the scheduling of a hearing. And all the while, this is going to be taking place against the backdrop of NFL free agency and the NFL mm -hmm. draft. You're gonna have you're gonna have a mini trial about Dan Snyder's fate at the same time that all these things are going on, which is the busiest part of the NFL's offseason. Color me skeptical, but I don't see any of this happening in real time because the because of the 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 um the reality of all that the league has on its plate taking precedence over having you know everybody drop what they're doing. And the owners having to devote, I don't know, one week, two weeks, you know, full time to sitting in the middle of a trial when, uh, you know, the, the teams are focused on trying to, you know, acquire players and, and scout players for the beginning of the 2023 NFL season. This is like the worst time of the year mm -hmm. to have this kind of chaos ensue off the field. So my my suspicion is that there'll be a lot of uh, saber rattling but nothing in actuality happening. And maybe they'll try to force his hand somehow with threats. What is your sense of what's going to happen by March 26th and the, and, and the NFL's response to it? I think you're going to have what we've been have, having, but even before the, the sale announcement, a lot of the, uh, at least some owners, we, we don't know which ones, it's, but trying to talk Snyder into selling, just do, just take the money, go. Um, but Pretty you know, that's, that, that that hasn't worked so far. I mean, the, he did announce a sale. Now, whether, you know, <clears throat> which did put all that talk on hold. And that's kind of reignited this week. I mean, there is there is a push for removal again. Now, per my sources and per reporting by the by the Washington Post, um, you know, that 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 is that that is that is happening now, whether it's just a threat or they're going to follow through with it. You know, who knows? But that's, you know, there there's going to there needs there, there has to be some movement over the next before the owners meetings. You know, or it's going to be, you know, it's going to be discussed. They could, they could be, uh, you know, there's no agenda item on either next week's, as far as, you know, for my sources, there's no agenda item on Snyder for next week's uh, special meetings, which are kind of, they're the precursor to the, to the full meetings. They're just kind of all, all the committee uh, members of, oh, sorry, all the committees and the members, uh, the owners, members on those committees meet um, before the, the, the big meeting to discuss it. There's no agenda item on that meeting next week about Snyder. And I don't think we're going to have one until Mary Jo White's report is it it is released. That's the other part that has. I think that I think it's unlikely to. There's going to be a movement towards that direction, Dan, until Mary Jo White's report comes out. All right. Uh, last question. Dan Snyder has been a noted absentee at some of the recent NFL owners meetings. He's been sending his wife, who's been standing in as mm -hmm. sort of designee for Dan Snyder while Snyder's been under quote unquote, you know, double secret probation or suspension, everything that is lawyers dispute that he's ever been under suspension. Will he be attending this meeting? Because it seems that the owners may be reluctant to talk about him without him being there. So is there, uh, are you getting any sense that Snyder's becoming more 
integrated or actively involved in the day-to-day -day stuff where he would actually attend the meeting like the 31 other owners do? Yeah, I, he wasn't very involved in the in the hiring process for Eric Bieniemy. I was told he wasn't. You know, there was I think there was a discussion after after Rivera and after uh, Jason Wright and Martin Mayhew made the decision. There was a discussion, I think, one on one with Eric Bieniemy and Snyder. Um, but uh, he wasn't. He was been. He didn't. He, um, he he reportedly didn't go to the last two games. He's his new his he's listed his primary residence as London. There's very several signs that he's not as hands on as he was especially early, early in his tenure as owner back in 99 and 2000, signing these old free agents and stuff and firing coaches and there's everything else. There's not, so he, there, there's a, there's, that's why the feeling that uh, we, at the end of the season, there was a feeling that, you know, Dan is kind of not, not say checked out, but you know, that, that he's not as involved as he was. And he can be, you know, as far as we can tell, he's even Jerry Jones told me last March at the owner's meetings that he, yeah, he had, he had full, full right to be at the owner's meetings, but Tanya's there and, and she's doing a great job and, you know, everything else. But there's no – Dan Snyder has not attended an owner's meeting since before the pandemic. Um, so – oh, sorry, the start of the pandemic. So it's been, you know, it's been it's been a few years. It's been, you know, a long time now, about three. So it's uh, – it'll be interesting to see if he, if, he, if he goes. That'll be a major indication. Um, but, uh, you know, he hasn't. And there's – I have no information whether he's – it's going to be him or Tanya or both of them at the owner's meetings come March. This, right, is the market. One, this is one of the strangest sagas sagas in NFL history. It's just it's just mind boggling everything that's been going on, the, the litany of stuff that seems to continually happen in and around you know, the, the commanders and Snyder. I, I almost expect that at some point between now and March 26, there's going to be some new development that nobody saw coming. And I'm not talking about a sale or a bidder that just emerges. I'm talking about some crazy thing. It could be indictment, could be so, something something new that's just going to shake yeah. the foundation of everything that we, we've been reporting because that's been par for the course mm -hmm. when it comes to Snyder and the commander. So expect the unexpected. But one thing we can expect, AJ, is that you'll be all over it and you're going to be one of the first people in the media to break any news about uh, you know the commanders and or Snyder? Is, is this in your career? You've been doing breaking news around sports and breaking stories for as long as I've been in this space. I'm is old, this, which is about almost a decade. Is this top yeah. three for you? Where does this stand in the annals of all Man. the stories you've covered in your career covering the, the sports industry? Yeah, I mean, I've covered this topic for two straight years, nonstop. I mean, it's. It's it started I've him over two and a half years. Him suing it, look at look at we go through. We 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 got the India lawsuit for misinformation, the alleged mis misinformation campaign. We got him using the federal court system, the, the petitions uh, to support that lawsuit, going after several people, including Bruce Allen and others, over oh, you know, in the and this is going back a couple of years now, using the federal court system to aid that lawsuit, which you know that Congress said last year was just, you know, a shadow investigation. They were, they were they were using that. They got call records during that process, call records of sources talking to reporters at the Washington Post. You know, there's been, this has been a, just a crazy story. And it's like, you know, there's, there's so much, there's so much out there. And it's, it's, I've never, it's, nothing shocks me at this point. And I'm working on stuff that would be shocking if I can that uh, more stuff that would be shocking if if I can confirm it, you know, about uh, about the this process. Um, and it's 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 like nothing I've ever covered. And you're you're also and it's hard. Okay, it's very hard for a reporter living here because um, I want to. As I'm, I'm very competitive, I also live not too far from the headquarters. Um, you hear things and you hear the craziest things. A lot of the things don't pan out. I mean, you could write, I could write, which is very very. I, Shouldn't have said that. I, I, I said this to my wife. I mean, you could, you could, you could write Dan Snyder eats babies and the, the majority of the fan base will believe it. You have to be very careful as a reporter. And I am. And that's why, that's why that statement last night was, I wasn't shocked by it, but I was not also, you know, I, I'm also very confident in my reporting. I have been very confident. Everything have a lot, pretty much everything, including the, in, in, including the two books days later, Congress confirmed my reporting. Um, Maybe, so there's AJ, maybe you should connect with Brett Favre's attorney and sue the commanders for defamation. No, <laughs> I'm some, I'm kind of upset. I'm not saying I'm upset. I'm not going to welcome a lawsuit, but I was like, oh, they didn't sue me. Yeah. So there's uh, I mean, that's another thing. I want this to go away because I have other stories like Brett Favre I would love <laughs> to report on. 
because <laughs> right now it's like uh, it's like all I'm all Dan Snyder all the time between that the live machinations Michael Irvin uh, Flores <laughs> being able we'll to board cover, arbitration we'll, we'll have to cover all those uh, on a future episode I wanted yeah, to get live been... and Michael Irvin and Brett Favre yeah I know <laughs> Dan Snyder just just sucks all the oxygen out of out of a podcast yeah, it's... episode. Yeah, um, it's you know, it, and and it, it it is it is it's going to be a great thirty for thirty. It's going to be a great dramatized movie. It's going to be. I mean, when this is all over, and the stuff, there's going to be stuff coming out after the sale. There's going to be stuff coming out if there's a sale. If there's a sale, there's there's going to be stuff coming out no matter what. Other stuff, I you know. Mean, this is just we're kind of. I I I'm not saying we're the tip of the iceberg right now. We're not. I think we're at the we're about halfway down the iceberg at this point. But there's going to be more out there, and um, you know, and by and I'm not the only reporter on this. Obviously, I'm one reporter at one independent outlet who's been doing his best. You got three, three or four reporters at the Washington Post. You got three reporters at ESPN. They're not the only ones either. There's other. There's a bunch of other reporters out there looking into things. And this is just this. This is there's going to be there's a chance now. This maybe this is it. Maybe this is all. Maybe this is all we can confirm. This is going to be it. He's going to sell. He's going to keep whatever. I just don't. Going by, going by the last few years, you know, you can't say it's over because we're always shocked by other things that come out. Yeah. Well, one thing I'll say about Snyder, and I, I think part of me, I know the Washington Commanders fan base is not going to want to hear this, but I, I kind of like to see litigation. It's what I enjoy commenting, reporting on, analyzing. The moment Snyder's sale to whomever, you know, owner X is approved by the NFL, he goes away. And all this, all this sort of, you know, the storylines disappear to the detriment of what we do for a living. And part of me wants to see the NFL kind of, you know, conduct a trial. We get to report on that. Snyder sues in federal court to overturn the forced sale. He seeks TROs. Everything is in federal yeah. court because it's transparency. And we can report about it in real time because in the federal yeah. court system, our access to the PACER database gives us real-time breaking developments on every development in a lawsuit. And this is a case, if it would ever go to the limit with antitrust and, you know, all the, you know, recriminations going, going, going both ways, this could be a multi-year legal saga. But, but then again, I, 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 I care about the game and I care about the league as a fan. And, and were that to happen, it would basically throw the commanders into the equivalent of a receivership. I mean, as it is right now, all the people at the executive level, you know, you know, Rivera, Jason Wright, whoever is like involved, they're going to be phased out when a new owner comes aboard. So it's almost like the organization, it's almost like the franchise is in receivership already. And the longer that this process drags out, uh, it, it it's going to really prevent the commanders from becoming one of the, you know, you know, top franchises in the league, and they're going to be a bottom feeder for as long as there's this uncertainty and cash crunch surrounding. Mm -hmm. the team. So, if Snyder continues to dig in, resist selling, and there's this you know multi front, multi tiered legal battle, it really shows to me that he doesn't give a damn about the team or the fan base. That this is simply about him, because yeah. he's fighting this is going to be to the detriment of the Washington Commanders. They need they need a new face, new owner, uh, a changing of the guard. And the longer he stays in place, uh, delays that from ever occurring. Anyway, a AJ, we could go on and talk about, we could do a Dan Snyder a telethon and just do 24 hours straight and start taking donations. Uh, but you've been breaking so many stories. I have a feeling we're going to have you back on within a couple of weeks. Dan Lost will join us. Um, and then, <laughs> You know, there's a lot, lot, lot of you know field left in in this story, and March 26th is is the date of the moment of truth, and uh, we'll have you back on. And obviously, yeah. anyone who who's following this story that wants to know what's happening in real time, AJ is about as good as it gets for following and covering the Washington Commanders Dan Snyder saga. So give AJ a follow on Twitter by AJ at by AJ Perez. Read his work on front office sports. I mean, he's truly, truly a, a sports industry insider. Basically, our version of Adam Schefter, Rap, and Woj all combined into one. And hopefully, you'll get paid like them at some point. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 maybe. But yeah, I'd say I would rather. You know, this has been very. There's so many things going on in sports right now with legal, legal, legal side of it, which you guys cover very well on this podcast and on your website. 
So there's a, you know, this is, there's no lack of it. And it's, uh, and it's, uh, thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, please follow along where it's possibly coming to a head. A lot of us hope. Uh, and, uh, and, um, you know, stay tuned. The owner's meetings, you're right. It's going to be very interesting once, uh, once the end of the month gets here. All right. Well, thanks again, AJ, for making time on your busy weekend. And uh, we'll, we'll follow we'll follow your work. And it was just a pleasure uh, talking to you about all things Snyder, Commanders, and whatever the topic of the day is. We'll have you back for Liv, for Michael Irvin, and all those other stories you're covering. You're the hardest working man in, in like sports industry journalism. No question about it. So have a great rest of the weekend. And we'll talk to you very soon, AJ. Thanks for having me on.